we know him as Tony McBride, but the rest of the education community knows him as Dr. McBride because Tony went to undergraduate school at the University of Tennessee. Then at Ole Miss, he got his PhD. Some of you don't think you can get a PhD at Ole Miss, but Tony did. <laughs> PhD, organic medicinal chemistry. Okay, he taught, um, what did you teach at Sanford? P. Kim? No, organic. Uh, organic chemistry. Organic Which was and, the uh, washout Bacchium. course. Washout course. Okay. <laughs> but Tony went on to a wonderfully successful career at Sanford School of Pharmacy as the associate dean for 16 years. Okay. Married before graduate school to the beautiful, understanding, and saintly <laughs> Carol. No, excuse me, Ellen Carroll Nash. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> okay. He's got two sons. One is a real rocket scientist, mm -hmm. works for NASA. The other is a financial wizard. However, financial wizards mm -hmm. are having a tough time now. He needs a job. <laughs> if anybody can help, talk to Tony after the lesson. He has two beautiful granddaughters and one scrip, uh, stepped grandson. But one of those daughters, Meredith, first in the state in cheerleading. Her squad won just recently. Okay. Uh, Tony met my wife Martha before I did in the basement of Linda Redmond's house in McBenville, Tennessee in 1963. That's a different story. We won't go there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony is a fluent German speaker. Nah. Uh, yeah. And any association that you might think Tony had to Tony's tonic, um, noted patent medicine in the 1800s, is purely uh, fiction. Okay. He also uh, didn't have anything to do with that t popular TV kit, Turning Lead to Gold. That's not Tony. But he is a man teaching the washout course of organic chemistry who has probably been responsible for keeping more people from being pharmacists here in Alabama than anybody else in the state. Help me welcome Dr. Tony McBride. No way. <laughs> I believe I need to thank you, Russ. I'm not sure. Uh, I've been involved in organic chemistry and biochemistry for about 50 something years of my life and this morning I want to share some of the things that I've I've come to know and believe because of my uh, background in chemistry. One of the things I want you to realize and this is the, one of the, my thesis this morning is that we're alone. We're alone with our God. Now that's not depressing, that's good. It appears that man is alone in the universe. There is an organization called SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. They have found no evidence of life outside of Earth. In 1963, a t radio telescope was set up in Puerto Rico that received no evidence of life in the universe since 1963. What they're doing, they're listening for radio signals from outer space to see if there's some repeatable message that's coming through. This is it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the size of this thing, there is a car. Uh, it was built by private funds, it's still being operated by private funds, but to date they have received no repeatable signal. I guess you realize that Mars exploration is going on right now. Curiosity, which is the little lander, has been exploring Mars since August of 1912, or 2012. Uh, that would have been a long time, wouldn't it? <laughs> Mars surface shows that there is water. Now one of the things they're always looking for is the presence of water because you can't have life as we know it without water. There is water in the soil. They've already proven that. But there is no methane in the Martian atmosphere. And if you listen to uh, uh, public radio on Friday afternoon, they have uh, science programs. And the head of the JPL Curiosity Landing Program um, speaks on there and she expressed her disappointment the other day that there was no methane on the Martian soil or in the and what does the absence of methane mean well uh, somewhat of a blow to those who believe that life started in a primordial atmosphere composed of those gases 
Methane would supply the carbon. Ammonia would supply the nitrogen needed. Water would supply hydrogen, oxygen, and carbonic acid, which is CO2. But alas, methane is produced by living organisms. So they're in a quandary. What got this started was in 1953 at the University of Chicago, um, Stanley Miller was a, a lowly graduate student, and I was one of those at one time. Uh, his research provider, or, uh, his research adv advisor was Yuri, and they proposed this experiment, and they did it. They had a boiling pot of water and gases over here. And as uh, the vapors came up through here and across into this chamber, they had an electrical spark. And the gases which were in there were water, methane, ammonia, and uh, carbonic acid. Well, they proposed that in primordial earth, in the atmosphere, there would be those gases and there would be lightning. And so they produced a constant spark across the electrodes. And they did this for several days. And then down here they tapped uh, the fluid off to see what was there. Well, they found glycine. Now glycine is one of the 20 amino acids that the body uses. Uh, it is the only amino acid, and I'll use AA here for amino acid, used by humans that is not optically active. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about that because that's a big point with me. Uh, carbon, which is the building block of all life, is a tetrahedral atom with four bonding sites, are identical. This gives rise to what we shall refer to as chirality, or optical activity. You can have a right-handed molecule, you can have a left-handed molecule. I'll demonstrate that. How many has had organic in here? Okay. I'm going to put together a carbon atom that has four different groups. Uh, white will be a group, uh, black will be a group, red will be a group, and blue will be a group. Now I'm not paying any attention as I'm putting these together, so I'll just put that one there. And I'll put another one together. Water isn't necessary for all life, so. <laughs> I'll take a sip. Now I'm going to put a blue here, and I'm going to put a red here. I did this in a random method. Now what I got to do is to see whether or not my groups will match. Aha. Did you, you may not be able to see this, but if I hold it by the blue group, uh, by the white group, that's white. <laughs> if I hold it by the white group here, you will note that the other three groups do not align. See that? I got a black, black. But if you use your imagination for just a second and put a mirror between these two groups, do you see that I have a mirror image? Black, black, blue, blue, red in the back, white on top. One of these molecules is left-handed. It doesn't make any difference which one it is. One's right-handed. We don't use right-handed and left-handed. I'm just doing that for you. We use dextro and levo, and now we use R and S. R for rectus, S for sinister. Sinister is Latin for evil. They first thought that left-handed people were evil. Uh, do we have any evil people other than Marie? Okay, we have a few evil people. All right. All right, do you see that you can have left-handed and right-handed molecules because they do not align. But watch what I can do. I can change any two groups, and I have to be careful because sometimes in class I used to put them back together just like I did and look like an idiot <laughs> for a second. Now watch. I have made the same compound. See that red, red, black, black, blue, blue alliance? This is the same compound. They are optically active because they have four different groups. Okay. <coughs> and that's what I went over just a second. We call one D and L, R and S. They're mirror images of each other. Uh, just as an example here, morphine has five chiral carbons, optically active carbons. If I were to go into the lab 
and to make morphine. First of all, the FDA wouldn't like that. But, uh, no, that's the FDA, the EDA. Uh, and make morphine. I would make two to the fifth compound, or 32 different compounds. And make 32 compounds. Okay. Now, interesting enough, in the body, we have right-handed sugars and left-handed amino acids. Humans use D sugars, dextrose sugars. Body runs on glucose. Everybody knows that. That is the fuel of the body, a.k.a. grape sugar. You've heard dextrose, blood sugar. It is a right-handed molecule, and the body cannot use left handed glucose. Put left-handed glucose in the body, comes right out in the urine. Cannot be metabolized. Humans use L or left-handed amino acids. And all amino acids in the body are left-handed except glycine. Glycine is not optically active because it has two hydrogens on there. Okay, the body cannot use uh-oh, uh got an error. The body can use right-handed amino acids. And I went over this thing and over this thing and over this thing. And there's an error. Make that right in your mind, okay? All right. Chemical synthesis of sugars and amino acids produce a mixture, 50-50, of DNL forms because it is a random process. Just like I picked up those two molecules a while ago, put the groups on there, that was completely random. Can then an L amino acid be formed in a random process? What do you think? Nah. What? Nah. nah. <laughs> well, it can, but you will also get a D. Okay. No, one gets equal parts of D and L. Then, and here's my point, big point. If life formed on Earth, should it not have been by a random process? If it were a random process, then why does the body have only D sugars and L amino acids? Big question. Has not been answered in science yet. Answer. I believe this. Life did not form by a random process. That's my thesis, based on what I know. There are, however, arguments for other life in the universe. Got you a question. There are more stars in our universe than grains of sand on the beaches and deserts of Earth. True or false? That is true. Science have estimated. Now, if you've had a little math, that's 7 times 10 to the 22nd power. In other words, you write 7 and then 22 zeros. Well, that's absurd, so that's the easy way to do it. But there are that many stars in the universe. Now, our sun is a star. Surely, scientists say, that there is some star out there with a planet just the right distance away that is similar to our Earth. Our Earth is a planet to the sun. The sun is a star. And so if there's that many stars, surely in the universe there has got to be another situation very much like our sun and earth. How many have ever heard of the Murchison meteorite? You have. Where? Inside. Inside. And I get this little thing on my phone that talks about it sometimes. Earthsky. Earthsky.com. Oh, Earthsky.com. Never heard of that. The Murchison meteorite was named because on September the 29th, 1969, a meteorite fell to Earth near Murchison, Victoria, in Australia. It weighed over 100 kilograms total. It is rich in organic compounds, which are not terrestrial, and they prove they're not terrestrial by carbon, uh, uh, not carbon dating, but the, the amount of carbon-14 that's uh, in there com compared to what's carbon-14 on Earth, but you don't need to know that. Okay. There are some amino acids, alcohols, and hydrocarbons, but not all necessary amino acids are present for life. 
Some are notably missing. But it did prove that there are organic compounds coming from extraterrestrial sites. Okay. What, however, does this prove? It simply means carbon compounds exist elsewhere in the universe. That is a fact. <coughs> Talk a little bit about entropy. Anybody had physical chemistry? Okay, if you've had physical chemistry, you know you can sweat blood. <laughs> My physical chemist teacher at Ole Miss walked across to me in front of a red light in downtown Oxford, Mississippi, and I said, the world would be a better place if I floor this thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I didn't. You can meet him on the street. He's the most wonderful guy. He's just like Carl Agee. But if he got a piece of chalk in his hand in physical chemistry... He was the devil incarnate. <laughs> okay, but anyhow, I did learn a little bit about physical chemistry, the second law of thermo. The second law of thermo is concerned with entropy, and that's a big word you can throw it around at the dinner table today. Um, it simply says that processes seek to equilibrium and randomness. There are some classic examples, most of which we'll understand. I understand this one. Water runs downhill until it's level. Doesn't go from a higher, um, from a lower to a higher place. Heat moves from cold to produce equilibrium, from hot to cold. Have a cup of hot tea, a cup of cold tea, you hold them together, what's going to happen? Both will be the same temperature. Equilibrium. Processes tend to chaos and not order. And you've probably heard this one talked about in Churches of Christ. One cannot shake a, bo a box of watch parts and open it to find an assembled watch. Right? You heard that before? All right. That's simply entropy. If you were to do that, you would be going from a lower order to a high order. And that violates the second law of thermal. All right, let's talk a little bit about organic and biochemistry. I'm home. I love them. I've taught both. Taking organic will introduce you to prayer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this one, I, t I used to start every biochemistry class at Sanford by this statement. By the time this class is over, you will believe in a supreme being. Life as we know it, even a simple cell, is much, much too complicated to have arisen from a random process. I cannot begin to tell you how complicated, how complex a simple living organism is. One cannot, even if one has the parts of the body, shake them together to make life. Life is tremendously complicated. That's one of my theses today. The complexity of life argues against a random process. Okay. Now some notes on chance. People who deal with this always talk about chance. What is the chance of life forming on earth in this? Um, there are those who hold that given enough time, molecules will form, aggregate, and voila, life. After all, the earth is four and a half billion years old. Now, do not doubt that number. I believe that number. Uh, I'll give you something you cannot argue against. We were talking about this in a radio pharmaceuticals course one time, and I said the earth is four and a half billion years old. And one little boy who had been trained at Free Hardeman raised his hand. He said, the Lord made the earth to look four and a half billion years old. How are you going to argue with that? Well, you can't. But it appears to me that the earth is that long. And that's a long period of time. No. Life is too complicated for to shake them together and get a living organism. And remember, processes do not tend to produce order, but disorder. And life is a highly ordered process. A few notes on chance, but be careful. 
took a course in statistics. I loved it. All right, we're going to start out with this. Now, I'm going to scare you. Because most people raised in Church of Christ would not touch those. <laughs> Verboten. <laughs> what do we call them? Face cards. Oh, you better not have any face cards in your house. So, I have uh, thought ahead. For those raised in the Church of Christ, you may use an ace from a rook deck. <laughs> Did we play rook? Okay. But I have a standard card. I didn't have, I couldn't find my rook cards the other night, but I found these face cards. How many kings in here? Four. All right, let's ask this question. I know. All right. What are the odds of pulling a king out of this deck? Just random. Well, there are four in there, and there are 52 uh, cards, so it's four out of 52, or a one in 13 chance. Now, what that means is, if, if you pull a card out, you've got a one in 13 chance of it being a king. If you reinsert it, and you pull again, and reshuffle, you still got that. So, statistics will tell you this. If you do that 13 times, you're probably going to pull a king in one of those pulls. Another way of looking at that, if I pay you, if you pay me a dollar for every king you don't pull, and I pay you $13 for every king you pull, at the end of the day, we'll be equal. Okay, same way with the rook cards. All right. Notice, and this is very, very important. I should have put an extra V in there. It can be done. If we went around the room here, somebody would pull a king. It can be done. Another example is the lottery. People talk about the lottery. I call it a tax on ignorance. <laughs> Probably everybody in here has slipped two dollars to Georgia or Tennessee, uh, Florida on taking a chance on the lottery. Let's say a lottery has 50 numbers. I just pull, I don't have any to have. I heard 50. Is that right? Stephen, would you, oh, Stephen, good boy. Stephen doesn't know. <laughs> okay. Are you have to choose five correct numbers to win the jackpot. What are the odds of winning? Well, it's this. On the first pull, you have five cards in there that are winners. So that's five out of 50. Second pull, you've got four winners, but you've only pulled in from 49 and th three out of 48, two out of 47, and lastly, one out of 46. Your odds for winning are 1 in 2,118,760. Now, would you take that? You ever thought about that? I'm would you like the $2 back? <laughs> I've always felt that way. I have played the lottery a little bit. I would, was that thunder? Okay. <laughs> but, I have, but I have never won. And every time that I look at my numbers after I've uh, spent some money on a lottery, I would like my money back. So I've just quit doing that. You're helping the education system. I, you're helping the education system. That's correct. And uh, if you want to see how we're helping the education system in Georgia, Tennessee, stop at Rising Fawn or First Town in Tennessee if you're coming south. But uh, Alabama does not have a lottery. Okay, what's the point? It is possible to calculate the odds in these examples since winning the lottery is proven to be possible. How do you know that? People win. There is that one person in 2,178,000 out there that wins the thing every now and then. So it is possible. Now ask this question. What are the odds that life began on earth by chance? How are you going to calculate that? Point. It cannot be calculated. It cannot be proven to be done. In other words, to calculate the odds on something, it must be possible. Pulling a king out of a deck? Possible. Winning the lottery? Possible. Calculating the odds on life? A random process? 
Cannot be. But atheists will argue, and I've heard this all my life, now I'll share it with you, that give enough monkeys enough typewriters, one will type the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Now, I'll show you how absurd that is. Mathematically, the odds may be calculated. Now, without regard to holding down the shift key to make uh, capital letters, let's say a QWERTY keyboard, which is a standard keyboard, Q-W-R-T-Y, has 26 letters, a space bar, and 10 numbers. Add those up, that's 37 keys. What is the chance the monkey hits the O of O say can you see? And you should be able to do that. What is it? One out of 37. Well, I didn't count the spaces and characters in the National Anthem, but I did do another example here. But you got that right. It's one in 37. The same for each character. Hmm. I count them by this. Has anyone ever proven it to be done? No. Rather than count the keystrokes in the National Anthem, I did this quick to show you how absurd the odds can get if you could calculate them. Let's say Tony McBride. That's 12 characters because you count the space between Tony and McBride as a, uh, a keystroke. He'd have to hit space bar, see? The odds are one to, I don't even know what that number is. <laughs> it's, uh, but I did write it out. I did have room to do it. That's the odds that that monkey will type my name. Now, the odds for him typing the Star Spangled Banner would be much, 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 much absurd. Coupled with the fact that no one has proven that it can be done. Okay, summation. We are apparently alone in the universe. I believe that. I believe that God created man. He breathed into man the breath of life, and that's where life came from. Organic compounds necessary for life do appear from outer space. That is a fact. The Murchison meteor tells that, meteorite. But believe this, life is far, far too complicated to have been formed by chance. That is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. Life is highly structured. And processes do not go from low structure to high structure spontaneously. Going from components to high structure violates the second law of thermodynamics, entropy. You tell me that life began from small particles aggregated together, and I'll say you have violated a law of thermal entropy. The complexity of life suggests the supreme maker. I believe that. All right. Let me see if I didn't miss a slide. That would be a, a travesty. All right. We believe that. We should be elated to belong to the believers. I'm a believer. I'll tell you right now, I'm a believer. And my belief, belief is faced, based on what I have seen and what I know. I have studied organic and biochemistry for 50-something years. But still, it's a matter of faith. You either believe or you do not. I tell people this. In the judgment day, there is no, there's no third line. What does he say? I will put the sheep on the right. I will put the goats on the left. And there's not a line for people saying, hmm, I wonder about that. Uh, there's no third line for the atheists or the agnostics. 
Big finish. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. And this is the day that God, the master builder, hath made on his earth with his hands and created all life. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice. That's it. This is not scientific. But okay. it's just plain old country boy common sense to me. And that is, if you had a lot of life out there on various planets, would God send Jesus around to die on all of them so that they'd have a chance of salvation? Now tell me that again. My, <laughs> my microphone was going, woo, woo. And that if, might not have been me. Yeah. I don't think there are. They're right <laughs> down my line. If there were life out there, yeah. you know, 20 planets had our atmosphere and so forth. Right. Would God send Jesus around all the planets to die so that they would have an opportunity to have their sin? If they were humans like we, yeah. I, I think so. I've heard Christians say, my God is big enough to have created more life elsewhere. And if he did, he did. that's fine. But it doesn't appear that he did. Right. That's all I'm saying.